Spoiler alert! The buzzword all throughout my talk is interdisciplinarity. And because we need to rise at times of crisis, I argue that it is necessary. But why? My whole point for this talk is that, from my own experience, I discovered that there's no such thing as a lone discipline or a discipline devoid of any connections with other disciplines. Same as a person, no man is an island, they say. Engineering, as most of us know what it is about, have to get to adapt to changing times, and for years it will continue to be that way. And by changing times, I mean we have to constantly ask ourselves as engineers or those who aspire to become engineers one day, how do I change the world? I hate to break, break it to you, but you just can't if you are alone. I am Andrew Espera, and my answer to that is the necessary interdisciplinarity in engineering. So before I move on, I was hoping I could give you a bit of context about why I was motivated to give this talk. I am a licensed electronics engineer and a full-time teaching faculty, got my master's in ECE back in 2016, and I am about to earn my master's in data analytics and applied statistics this December, and my PhD in engineering education in the coming spring semester from Virginia Tech here in the U.S., the first time I came here, I got a funding support from DOST Pichard to undergo a research training in additive manufacturing or 3D printing for a year worth of scholarship before deciding to pursue my PhD. Well, that may have given you enough detail as to how diverse my professional background is, then you would have known that I had to learn many disciplinary fields along the way, not just learning them, but understanding and developing respect for them. Being in this engineering education research space made me think that systemic barriers that exist in the Philippine context that tend to change how our administrators think are most of the time uh, counterproductive to what we are capable of doing as engineers slash educators. For someone who has been educated in the Philippines most of my life, Learning disciplines outside or even within the bounds of the engineering field is easier said than done. And being in the field of social science as an engineer gave me so many more perspectives about engineering that never would have crossed my mind if I stayed within the confines of quote-unquote hard sciences. For instance, I developed a reservation for the term hard and soft sciences a dichotomous categorization that was formulated long before time to distinguish natural physical sciences and engineering from psychology and other social sciences. First thing that came to my mind was, if there was a term for someone who's racist by undermining other scientific disciplines, and for the lack of an appropriate word, should it be called disciplinist? Yes, most probably this seemingly enforced dichotomy has sparked decades of debate, debate um, about how dare engineering and hard sciences look down on social sciences because they are soft. Oh, enough of that. If I am to defend my social scientist and education researcher identity, um, I will have to stand up. Studying behaviors, cultures, and traditions of people is not an easy feat and nothing is a very soft about it. And engineering, without minding the stakeholders of their design, defeats its purpose of engineering something for the better, right? As I move along my journey and being exposed to research, learning and teaching here in the U.S., I can see that the future is bright if we work together in a way that we understand each other's weaknesses and strengths and then support each other when necessary. Most especially, we can rise from whatever crisis we are all experiencing. But maybe due to the lack of a uh, deeper context um, on this talk, I may have to introduce to you some important concepts to better understand the entire idea of working together. So what are the various interconnection terms across disciplines out there? Here is an overview of 
disciplinarities according to Marilyn Sember's study called Advancing the Social Sciences through Interdisciplinary Enterprise. Intradisciplinary means working within a single discipline. Multidisciplinary means people from different disciplines working together, each drawing on their disciplinary knowledge. Cross-disciplinary means viewing one discipline from the perspective of another, and interdisciplinary means integrating knowledge and methods from different disciplines and using real synthesis of approaches. And finally, transdisciplinary means creating a unity of intellectual frameworks beyond the disciplinary perspectives, and this would eventually create one unique hybrid discipline in the long run. Most of what we usually do here are intradisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, and multidisciplinary collaborations. But why I see great potential in interdisciplinary um, engineering is because its integrative method of acknowledging, of utilizing, and ultimately synthesizing multiple disciplinary approaches is the way to go and get engineering solutions out there to their full potential. And to address why there are such differences in perspectives from one discipline to another in terms of their contribution to society, their level of rigor, if you will, and their methodology toward inquiry, well, we have four basic worldviews in research as well, according to Cresswell. And to understand the philosophy behind these worldviews, we are one step closer to understanding and respecting uh, other disciplines. Worldviews are set of beliefs that guide action, according to Guba, and most of your decisions and approaches to inquiry are anchored upon one of these philosophical worldviews. Post-positivism is sometimes called scientific research and has been represented as a traditional form of inquiry, using you know, variables and hypotheses being tested. The knowledge that is produced by such paradigm is heavily based on observation and measurements of the objective reality that exists in the world. And we were taught that science and engineering research should be done this way. Whereas a constructivist worldview basically seeks an understanding of the world and develops subjective meanings of varied and complex experiences towards certain known things or objects. In other words, the reality that constructivism aims to surface out is that of contextual experiences of participants and making sense of them. Individuals who hold assumptions of transformative approach position themselves uh, after criticizing the imposed structural laws and theories of the post-positivist uh, people that do not quite fit to the radical changes that society is experiencing, such as discrimination, issues in social justice, oppression, and others. And their reason for existence is to advocate for their beliefs by linking political and social action to these inequities through action agenda and policy making. And lastly, pragmatism generally concerns with practical applications of the inquiry. Simply put, whatever methodology works will be used and applied in order to understand a problem. And so pragmatists are not committed to one ideology or one methodology of research. And researchers who possess this worldview believe that research always occurs in a particular setting and all methods must be contextualized and mixed to achieve the purpose of the inquiry. Truth be told, I am a developing pragmatic researcher and that is why I advance, I, I advocate for interdisciplinarity in engineering because um, engineering as a whole may be used as an integrative tool to address some of society's shortcomings and needs. I know I have given you a crash course to intro to philosophical worldviews, or whatever that is, but I see the importance of doing it so that you will have a better understanding um, of why we see other disciplines in a manner that we used to, and hopefully we can give that each discipline and the people behind contributing to the betterment of the society the respect that they deserve. So now, I need to ask you, where do you identify yourself among the philosophical worldviews? Moving on, we refocus our attention on why interdisciplinarity is necessary for engineering. 
with input from people around the world, an international group of leading technological thinkers was asked to identify the grand challenges for engineering in the 21st century. Their 14 game-changing goals for, uh, for improving the life on the planet announced in 2008, which is way, way uh, like a decade ago, are outlined here. The committee suggested these grand challenges shall fall into four cross-cutting themes for sustainability, health, security, and joy of living. So given these uh, grand challenges for engineering, do you think a single discipline would be able to address a single engineering challenge from this list? Hmm, maybe yes, maybe no. But what I believe is that in order to give it a shot, we must work together in an integrative way, in an interdisciplinary fashion. For example, in the midst of the pandemic, do you think a certain electronics engineer like me and using my knowledge in electronics alone could solve the problem of advancing health informatics or maybe enhance virtual reality for education? Of course, I need the expertise and approaches of an educator, data analyst or scientist, programmer, computer engineer, and so on and so forth. And these are not mutually exclusive areas to begin with, but that does not mean I have to do it alone. Involving some people in a process is not enough, but as I said, there's no way of going about it but to synthesize each other's expertise and knowledge into a potentially effective approach to inquiry. Well, this is my pragmatic self speaking to be aware of what comes out of my mouth and still maintain that vigilance of truth. That is the only way that you will be able to get a deeper understanding of things. You may think at the back of your mind, why so complicated? We as engineers, as we take on the real world, they say the way we do things outside is ultra reflective of how we were brought up and educated. According to the published book by the National Academy Press for Sciences and Engineering called The Engineer of 2020, Visions of Engineering in the New Century, well, it is already 2021, so I assume that these claims are still true a year after it was aspired for. Although these are more idealistic than what we expected, in the context of the Philippines, we may need to step up a bit. I don't judge our engineering education system, but I am here to challenge our dear educators and administrators uh, to look at these attributes and then look ahead in the coming years. Are we nurturing our engineering students to be this kind of an engineer in, in the future? And then I will also challenge you to look at um, things in a more interdisciplinary way, especially in our approaches to teaching. Do you think our engineers will more likely be resilient, hold high ethical standards if we do not develop social sensitivity and responsibility among them? Do you think doing lectures and assessing them with just one type of test will develop the needed strong analytical skills and practical ingenuity that can be transferred onto different contextual applications? Are we developing their creativity or are we killing it? And ultimately, are training our students enough to be responsible for their own learning inside and outside of their classroom? That answer, the, the answers are up to you. I know the things that we wanted to do may be so different from the way things really are due to some limitations that we have no control over, right? Now, being a selfish developing pragmatic researcher, I also wanted answers. My PhD dissertation focuses on understanding why there is a certain disconnect between what knowledge bases the engineering instructor has, inclu has including the knowledge in teaching, and their actual teaching practices. In other words, I wanted to bridge this gap by providing a deeper understanding of why and how these two aspects of teaching are often disconnected, whereas they should be in synergy. So what, as much as I wanted to be a contributor to the production of good engineers, but this is not mere production of goods. Engineering educators are an integral part of the future of engineering and our engineers. So my first argument is educators must have an integrative knowledge of content and knowledge about how to teach them to be able to plan and facilitate teaching content. Second, 
we must understand what prevents educators from transforming their plans of teaching into the actual teaching in the classroom. Because by providing rich answers to these questions, we can investigate some of the factors, develop some professional faculty support to empower our educators and unleash their full teaching potential. Again, that is easier said than done. But see, I was not pursuing a PhD in engineering education degree. How would I ever in my lifetime think about doing this even as someone who was experienced in teaching without developing my understanding about how students learn, instructors teach, or even how the curriculum works or how to analyze educational data, overall will not capacitate or motivate me to do research this way if not for one key ingredient in my research. And that key has always been interdisciplinarity, the synthesis of disciplinary approaches. The issues and problems that we are facing in engineering Education are undoubtedly some form of crisis, not just a pandemic. I call the pandemic the worsener of what is already a problem. Look at what it has done to our students and teachers now. We need support more than ever. And I do think our personal and professional experiences and knowledge that we've built in engineering can be used as an effective tool to fight against various worseners that contribute to the world's crises. Ultimately, as an engineering educator, an electronics engineer, a data analyst slash statistician, an additive manufacturing enthusiast, an education and engineering researcher, and as a Filipino who loves his, who loves his country, I have started to embrace the multiple professional identities that I have, and I truly believe that interdisciplinarity is not just necessary to rise above a crisis, but it is the major catalyst to impactful engineering, and it is the future.